This is my friend Aiden. He's one of the dopest people I've ever met. He lives in California and works on cars all day long. And I mean literally, he's a mobile mechanic. But in his free time, he builds some of the coolest 80s BMWs I've ever seen. Let's get to know him. I'm way over here in the tank top. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm a little dirty. <laughs> You're working on your car while Sorry the cover's on it? Oh yeah, we gotta keep it fresh. <laughs> what are you doing to it? Uh, I just took the tie rods out. Putting new control arms in, new tie rods in, and yeah, just checking over everything so I can drive it to Monterey. Is this car like always broken, or are you just no, to no? Work I'm just on always it? making stuff better. Oh, okay, kind of I, I couldn't tell. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> bit of both, though. It <laughs> definitely has some issues, but every time it has one, I just like make it better. So some bigger ones that are a little uh, easier adjustable, and they're, and they're better, better, different metal too, so they're they're a little stronger. This shouldn't like wiggle. Oh. It wiggles a lot, yeah. <laughs> so my steering was like super lazy. Um, and I was always kind of wondering what it was, so. How much money have you put into this car? Like, 20 grand? Yeah, I think saving everything on labor was probably like the, the biggest part, you know? It's like, probably just like twice that if I wanted to have somebody build it all. Yeah. Can we take the cover off and like look yeah, at it? Yeah, we can. <laughs> so here's the E28 5... E28. What is that, a 528? 535. 535? Big boy. Yeah, big boy. And this car is so nice that BMW featured it. Uh -huh. How did that happen? Like BMW putting that, your car on their Instagram? I just tagged them in a couple posts. I feel like I've uh, posted a lot of different stuff, just kind of like showing off, building it all, and then always kind of tagging them every once in a while. They liked a few stuff in the past, and then they uh, they hit me up on Instagram, and they just sent me a post of mine, and they're like, hey, can we share these photos? And I was just like, yeah, yeah, you can share them. And then I, ever since then, I hit them up again and kind of just asked like, if I could do anything for them, kind of a vibe, like yeah. literally whatever they wanted, just if I could help out with content. So when I drove, Oh, uh, that convertible on my trip to Washington and back, I made content for them up at that event and uh, yeah, posted for them and stuff. It was really fun. Did they pay you for this stuff? And none of the stuff was, was paid when I first posted stuff on Instagram, but uh, yeah, they did help me out with the trip, just in, you know, getting gas and all the stuff that kind of just helped me get up there and back because uh, I was kind of on the fence of being able to go, yeah. but they wanted me to show up and uh, and yeah, do a couple things there, so. It's <laughs> not coming off. Ew. So you're still trying to get your control arm off, right? Yeah. That's the thing? Yeah, it's Not just an unfortunately positioned bolt. If I had a lift, you know, I'd have a lot more room to where I could get a big old bar on mm -hmm. it and break it off. But uh, kind of lacking that space right now. So, hi oh. mom. TJ's here now. <laughs> Hello. Are these your cars as well? No, so this white one is actually a client's. Because that's kind of what I do for work, because I fix other people's cars. So that's how you make the money yeah. to pay for yourself to yeah, build this car. I mean, car. when I was building this car, I had I was still working on cars as a job, but I was uh, I was at this uh, auto dealership. It was a private dealership called Rosa Corsa, and uh, I did a lot of work there. And then, yeah, just uh, after that, I moved on to doing it all myself, and it's been really fun. I'll do mobile stuff, so I put all the tools in my car, and I'll come do simple, you know, most maintenance, I'll do brakes, suspension, kind of whatever, tune-ups, diagnosis. I try to focus on these older cars because labor time, labor is really expensive for these cars. I mean, if you, I'm sure you know with your 944, oh, yeah. you bring it anywhere, Dude. you're paying oh. probably 150, 200 an hour. That car labor, right? cost me, guess how much maintenance I had to spend? 5K. Three and a half Damn, US. That's pretty bad. It's really, that's what I'm saying. That's where the money comes in. And it's like, that's the only reason I can afford to be with people. are like, how do you have such a nice car? And it's like, well, I, I, I don't know. I paid for you only this. I it. paid for It's like building the Lego kit where you go and yeah. buy all the pieces instead of like buying the whole Lego kit. Yeah. I bet it'd be cheaper. <laughs> yeah, and this car, like not only did you build it, you didn't just take a car and build it, you yeah, rebuilt true. it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, this car crashed. was total. Def definitely part of it. I was gonna get rid of it uh, literally the day after crashing it. Like I had somebody ready to meet with me. I'm pretty glad I didn't do that one. Can you walk us through what the story was of you crashing this beautiful car in front? Show us where the damage yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, this was a black, honestly, it's cool having this example right here because this car kind of looked identical to that one there. It was just black, but it had the American bumpers, it had those style five wheels, <laughs> the ugly uh, valence in the front with little buck teeth looking fog lights and stuff. And uh, yeah, I hit a deer on the 73 South toll road around here, which in California is not popular. I don't know how it is in Canada or over in the, uh, over the seas, but um, there's not a lot of deer here. It's not normal. Yeah and it was like six in the morning. I was the only uh, car on the freeway. And yeah, it jumped right in front of me, probably like 10 yards in front of the car. I kind of tried to dodge it and didn't really do too well. It hit me about right here. So crushed, right in this Yeah, corner. crushed this bit in. I'll send you a photo or something, but yeah. Well, yeah, the whole fender was done. 
and yeah, it was pretty bad. It was, uh, the frame was bent in about an inch and a half. I started posting it online and I showed all my memories with the car and at the end of the video I said, if even 1% of, of the car community who sees this video Venmoed me a dollar, yeah. I could rebuild my car. And it blew up and I made about 2,500 bucks, I yeah. think, in like 12 hours. And that was the night before my birthday. So I woke up on the day of my birthday and I had like all these Venmos and stuff. And not only was it people Venmoing me, but it was like, it was it was like hundreds of just messages of people saying like, dude, here, I gave you a dollar. I gave you $5. I gave, some people sent me like 50 bucks. And we're just like, I wish somebody would do this for me kind of a thing. And like, I can't wait to watch you rebuild your car. And I'm sitting there like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> like, I, I don't have to rebuild yeah, it. Yeah, like I wasn't really like planning on it. I kind of just wanted to figure out something. So I wasn't getting anything from insurance. I wasn't getting anything. You know, 2400 bucks wasn't gonna fix my car. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's gonna take a lot more. <laughs> one other thing that just kind of felt like a weird little miracle was another one of these E28s, kind of looking once again exactly like that one, showed up freaking five minutes away. It was a manual, it had the Euro bumpers, it had a, an LSD, it had brakes from an E36 M3, um, a 289 cam, just like a bunch of cool stuff for the motor that he hadn't even installed. The guy was moving to Florida and he needed to get rid of the car. Interior was totaled, but it had all the body pieces mm -hmm. I needed. So I took that money, he had it posted for three grand. I showed up with my 2,400 bucks, he took it and I just, I drove it here and I kind of just had the two cars sitting together and I spent the next, yeah, year and a half just kind of puzzling them together. This car. And then I painted it blue and added this thing. Is this the one that you crashed or is this the one that you bought the this shell? The one that I crashed. So basically, yeah. So I bought the shell and I, I cut the front end off of it. I welded it to the front. I like this whole front clip was kind of from the other car. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the fender and the hood and a lot of other pieces. Then I just kind of Mickey Mouse them together. I, I had to go to a frame shop. That was another one of the things I didn't do myself. I didn't mm -hmm. uh, bend the frame back. I have a, a good friend who has a shop over here in Costa Mesa called Fix and Chips. Mm -hmm. uh, he does a lot of framework, body restorations from crashes. And uh, he has this big old frame machine and we hooked it up to these chains and uh, he was able to yeah bend the frame back that kind of inch and a half that it was bent. So he kind of explained that it, the metal wants to go back to the position that it was in originally. That's yeah. just something about the physics of metal that's kind of cool. When you heat it up and bend it, it'll want to go back to the shape that it was. And I did all the rest of the assembling and then we kind of just kept going and going. I got Euro headlights, I did the Alpina valence. My same friend who suggested me make the TikTok thought of the Odier license plate. So I thought that was pretty cool. Who is this friend? Um, his name's Samuel. He's a, just a close friend of mine from high school. Sam.amg. So if it wasn't for him, this car wouldn't If it wasn't for him, this car wouldn't exist. even be here. Same thing with the W badge. He thought of the Wumbo thing from SpongeBob. He just made a joke about it while we were sitting there. And I was like, dude, okay, I'll flip it over and I'll put it as a W. w. And it kind of just stands for, uh, for like winning, you know. Yeah. I didn't, didn't uh, destroy the car after. And then I met all my closest friends. So I met you, I met this guy Connor, I met Holden. Yeah. All just from building cars and liking cars. And, and especially with this car, community. like it really, everyone knows you because of this car and yeah. this color. Yeah, definitely the color. Yeah, it kind of just like popped in a way that I wasn't really planning on, honestly. Yeah. I just thought it looked pretty. You want to show me That'll the E30 fun. quickly? Yeah, of course. All right. Because I want to check this car out. Because this car is cool. This one is like what you originally built and yeah. grew yourself on. Yeah. And then this thing, tell me a little bit about the story on this. So I got it for that E30 uh, picnic event that we were talking about previously. Um, I bought it last year and I did all of the maintenance to it. I just made it run really well. You no, know, no leaks, nothing like that. Um, serviced everything. After I finished kind of doing all that service and stuff, I drove it up to that event and back. And then I spent the whole year after that doing all the body work, making the bumpers cool, cleaning up all the trims, putting uh, better seats and all that inside of it, uh, putting air suspension on it and doing mm -hmm. all the fun stuff. And then I drove it to the event for the second time and I had a really good time. So that's really all it was. It was kind of just wanted to make it match that car just cause yeah. that car's story's cool. They thought the no deer plate would be pretty cool. And oh, now I drive is, it every day. <laughs> this thing is clean. Like, look at this interior. Most E30s, I'd say this is on the cleaner side. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Are these aftermarket wheels? No, they're all they're all BBS uh, OEM BMW wheels. Called the Style Five, and that's just that uh, star spoke kind of pattern in the middle. Toyota Hos, which is your favorite? <laughs> Definitely the E28. The E28. Yeah, yeah, nothing compares to it. I just don't really think the uh, the E30s drive the same as the E28s do. It just feels bigger, more solid. I like yeah. it. Better. 
So, I got a few quick fire questions. Yeah, hit me. What's your first, or what is your first car? Oh, a 1968 Oldsmobile Cutlass. What's the story on that car? Um, I just wanted a first car and I wanted a classic car and I found one that wasn't running. It was uh, from an old boss of mine. Yeah, I drove it all through my sophomore year of high school and then uh, that was about it. Yeah, I got rid of it, flipped it. What's your dream car? Ooh, I have to, wait, it's a terrible question. There's too many cars out there, but I'd say the, ooh, the 70s BMW, the 3.0 CSL. Okay, uh, the one yeah. with the Batmobile kit on it. Yeah, that's sure. an amazing car. 100% that one right you there. You could build one, right? Yeah, exactly. I'll find one one day. Build your own. <laughs> that's okay. definitely coming at some point. Five car garage, what are you taking? Ooh, one of those, probably a 300 SL. Shoot. Like a 918, dude. Yeah. Like something like that for sure. A GT2 RS. Yeah. Um, you got one more left. Be something else that's old. Um. Would you keep the E28? So many cool cars out there. I feel like I'd have to have an E28. You're right. The E28 would have to be in there. So, yeah, then we'd have an E28 535i. <laughs> it's a dream job. Probably having my own kind of custom build shop. You know, uh, making something in a similar way that Singer, Gunther Works, someone like that does, and they just you know build something incredible where it's almost like an art piece. The way it's just kind of very mm -hmm. unique and uh, s uh, specific towards how they want to build mm -hmm. it. Um, Building cars for customers, it kind of just given it to me and given me a little bit of the creative mm -hmm. freedom with it and building them something that, that uh, yeah, that they'd enjoy. And would you want to build one car brand like Singer and Gunderworks or would you do many car brands? <sighs> yeah, I guess like why not many, I guess so. Um, I guess the dream too would just to be doing the social media content and stuff as well, you know, just like documenting the whole build process and then uh, Documenting mm -hmm. getting rid of them or selling them or however however the builds go. What's the yeah. biggest piece of advice you give yourself when you're 10? I guess just like believe in yourself, you know, just like stick to what you like because you'll find some way to kind of make it happen. You know? Yeah. Yeah, just spend your time doing things that you enjoy. Forget about anything else. Forget about how much money you're going to make, how much I don't know people are going to like it, how much other people are going to care. Just do something that makes you happy because that's really all you have is, is your time and uh, spend it wisely. Doing something, doing what you can do right now, no matter what it is, no matter how small it is. Yeah. Have somebody that you can look up to because yeah. it's like it's really just about doing that and, and, and learning from there. Like an inspiration and then once you figure out how they do it, then yeah. you can take it and do your own thing exactly, with it. Exactly, exactly. You'll get very creative with it and yeah, do everything your own way. So you can give us a sneak peek of anything that's going to be coming in the next year. And I want to put an E24 on hydraulics, like make it bounce. Like a low rider. Yeah. Dude, that's my favorite <laughs> idea. That is my favorite. I feel like that'd be fun. I've never seen it before. They're really long. And like some Dayton's on it. Yeah, like, some like yes. 15 inch wheels. And it's yes. Just like, dong, dong. Yes, please, 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 so we'll please. See if please. That happens. That'd be hey, so thank fun. you so much. Dude, thank you I for appreciate talking. appreciate it. it. It was nice to talk you're to you. You're one of my favorite people. Every time I come to California, <laughs> you're like the most genuine person. You and Eddie. <laughs> you too, guys. Appreciate it. Dude, hell yeah. What's your what? Instagram? Oh, Instagram at Vizu Cars. Hit me up on there if you ever want any mechanic work in the OC or LA area, and I'll, I'll get you right. Uh, or if you want him to build you a lowrider BMW. Yeah, yeah. Write me a blank check, and I'll make it happen. <laughs>